Hello, hello, hello. It's Johnny Mike Gravelin coming to you from Chicago as usual. And we're having our usual routine here. I'm told that this uh, trial is about three hours long. What, what, what am I doing here? All right. I had echo because I <laughs> had myself up in another window. <laughs> Uh, it's never a professional operation, but it, it gets worse at night. It, it really does. But look, I, I I'm ready for the for the event here. <laughs> I'm in full full Blandino garb, ready to roll. I, I guess what we're I guess what we can do. Alex did this to me last time with the, with the chili thing, and it you know it makes me it makes me want to do this. I can't get enough of it. I can't. All right. I, I guess what I'll do is I'll play. I'll play a little bit. I'm not sure how long he's going to take. So I'm in contact with him. I, I I think we're fairly close, but in the meantime, I've got I'll, I'll throw up some some stuff from the playlist, which will remind us why we want to see this. Uh, I, I've got I've got some good nuggets. I I've got a playlist that you can check out called Kim Blandino Vexatious Litigant. It's good times, top to bottom. Let's let's uh, let's give that a look. Oh, big stretch. Too much effort in it, mate. <laughs> Too much effort, indeed. Page what? Ten. ten. Page ten. Um, Mr. Walters is matter two one seven five six nine. And here we go. It's not Kim's case. Mr. Walters, how are you? Hi, Joe. It's very good. Pleasure right. to see you again. Page what? 10. 10. Page 10. Um, Mr. Walters is matter 217569. Mr. Walters, how are you? Hi, Joe. It's very good. Pleasure right. to see you again. Nice to see Sorry, you. We're back. But oh, I that's followed okay. your advice and it didn't really get us anywhere. Well, yeah, I, I get it. I mean, it's there, there's not a lot I can do about that, though, understand. But I think this might be of interest. Um, I went back to my parole officer. I've been making my payments. I've been on Social Security. I've been paying what I can in restitution. Okay. All of a sudden, he hit me with a stunning thing. He says, you got to pay 26000 a month. And I go, well, I know I owe all this restitution, but there's never no real figure. He says, well, that 10 days a month you're getting is gone. Okay. And it's going to push my liberty interest way out. Okay. So here's Weatherford. Um, Meaning your parole officer saying you're not going to get your good time uh, yeah. monthly if you're not paying restitution. He says, you're going to have to go back. I can't do anything about it. You're going to have to go back to the original court. Okay. You got to let them know about the liberty interest. Uh, and that and then possibly uh um, hold on a second who's this guy staring oh, at me over here this I'm, is kim blandino I, he I'm has trying a, to appear miss carrie i'm a cult plaintiff in the civil case trying okay to you're a, are you an attorney no not then you're then you need to sit down and quit staring at me like somehow you need to talk to me or whatever i do need to pardon i make a record no okay i'm going to make a record about you in a minute but you need to sit down and be quiet because you're not a, a plaintiff or a defendant in my criminal case you're not an attorney you can't appear in my criminal case and act like an attorney so sit down and be quiet mr Thank walters you, go ahead oh, wow i mean that's on the edge i've done a lot with kim blandino i have a whole playlist i'll put a link to it in the description below but uh this guy's got a criminal matter and uh, and mr blandino's in here saying well i'm co-plaintiff in a civil action well okay but you're not an attorney and you're not involved in this case. And, and of course, the judge is having none of it. And don't forget to hit like and subscribe.
or the dogs get it. Uh, but anyway, um, so I told my parole officer I would try and uh, see if I can go back in front of Judge Herndon and explain the liberty interest part since that sure. has an effect on that and the restitution. Here's Weatherford. Uh, he went in and got the Supreme Court to list him as disabled, right? Okay. So practicing law and all that. Um, he's now demanding $250,000 in extortion fees. He says he'll give me the CD back. Okay. And uh, I asked him, I said, well, let's do this. Let me see if I can talk to the court and maybe work with the DA's office and see if the DA can help get involved and deliver the CDs and the files to the DA so we can pay this restitution because they're folks are old. Okay. They're not going to be here long. I'd like to get this matter paid. I know, but then we have the ability to do it and then help me with my liberty interest. What I explained before, though, is what you're seeking is to force some individual to turn over some property to you. That is not anything that's involved in my criminal case. That's why I said you got to file the civil case. We did. You know what? Let me tell you something. Are you did you file the the uh, write the motions in Judge Escobar's civil case? Yeah, you did? Okay, so let me tell you something. When you want to file motions in court and act like an attorney when you're not really an attorney, saying things like threatening the judge about how judges get kicked out of office for misconduct and all your egregious stuff where you don't follow things, you want to act like an asshole, act like an asshole. But I'm telling you, that gets you nowhere in court. And you know what else gets you nowhere in court? Sitting in the audience of a court while a judge is engaging with somebody and shaking your head and being all demonstrative. So get out. No, it wasn't inadvertent. Don't give me that. It's not inadvertent. It's never, get out. It's never inadvertent when you come in and act all disrespectful to people. Yeah, turn it, and that is his words, not mine, sir. I, no, I, 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 I am perfectly. perfectly. <laughs> I, really liked, I really liked the defendant trying to distance himself from uh, Kim Blandino. He should have done it beforehand. Also, it, you know, it's, it's up, for the, up to the prosecutor and the powers that be out there. But it, right there, on the record, he basically gets an admission that uh, that Mr. Blandino is practicing law without a license. It's it's not a it's not a good situation for him. Perfectly aware of what I thought was going. Uh, he on. has an interest, Mr. Walters. In I've ass. never had any issue with you being disrespectful at all. Yes. Thank you, sir. Um, but what I would say is, for whatever reason, that guy's your co-plaintiff. He needs to file his stuff, and you need to file your stuff. Yeah, I'm going to separate. You don't want to get a judge all mad at you. But he, but here's the thing. Um, I know you're frustrated with what her order was, but. It, it's it's a difficult thing to get a judge to the point in a civil case of saying, now I'm going to issue a civil arrest warrant for somebody because they're not complying with certain things. Right. Um, there are ways, I mean, you guys could potentially ask her to set up certain type of examinations to occur. And if Mr. Weatherford doesn't comply with that, then maybe you've got a contempt issue to ask for an arrest warrant. But it's not... As much as I would like to help you, it's not within my jurisdiction to order somebody else to comply with something to help you get money so you can pay your, your restitution. Is there a way, Your Honor, I could work back maybe through the state and the DA's office, visit with them and have them examine this whole thing and see where we well, might lie with that? Not really, because all their real obligation in the criminal case is to make sure you had your discovery in the case, not to make sure your former attorney, who we all agree screwed up a lot of things, um, provide certain, you know, documents and stuff to you that allow you to generate restitution. Um, their obligation, that would be asking them to basically become your civil attorney to go out and help you pursue something from your former nice. attorney because your former attorney is, is not being a good guy and complying with what he should comply with. Um, that, that's why I said the only two options really are go to the bar and, and see yeah, they so, denied it. Yeah, and only because he said he was disabled, and they took him off disabled status. But he's out in Anderson, still practicing law. Yeah, that. I and uh, that's why I was going to talk to the DA's office about that, look into that because the Supreme Court gave him a disabled status, but he's still listing on his website and having people come. Have there you, did you go down to the Civil Law Self Help Center in the building to try and talk to those people, um, see if there's any attorneys in the pro bono project that would help you out and give you ideas about what it is? Because I can't really give you legal advice, but I what understand. it is. You need to be requesting of Judge Escobar um, to set up to ultimately get a warrant, meaning it, it, you can't just go in right away and say, this guy never returns my calls. I want an arrest warrant. It's a to get a, a, an arrest warrant in a civil case. You kind of got to be patient and work through a process of showing that somebody is not complying because it looks like she's issuing orders for things. 
Um, but a great concern, not the arrest said. warrant. Yeah, not the arrest <laughs> warrant that you want. Yes. And I know the arrest warrant is what you want because that's probably going to generate the guy coughing up what you need him to cough up. That's but right. you got there's kind of a process that you're going to need to go to get there. I'll follow that. And I'm trying to separate myself from that. All he has a little, little asset, legal complaint. That's it. Yeah. Well, and, and, and I get why you're co plaintiffs, but like I said, I mean, it doesn't well, separate that if I can. If an attorney wrote that in a pleading in front of me, it'd be Judge, I apologize. Be bad, that's right? why I said his words are his words. I get it. It's all right. Thank you. God bless. All right. Good luck. Thank you. Now. Okay, um, we'll get back. Well, there you have it. Uh, that was just a lot of fun. It, it, you know, what was going on here, this is a criminal matter, and the defendant saying, I'm having a hard time paying my restitution and providing stuff because my former attorney won't give me documents. I don't know the basis of that dispute or, or whatever, but uh, Kim Blandino sort of injects himself into that, and he has no business. Hi, this is Attorney Mike Graham. I'm coming to you from Chicago, as usual. And I was doing a long live stream today on the Kim Blandino trial. Uh, it's a good video. It's called Closing Arguments. I'll put a link to that in the description below. But with, there were some real fireworks during the rebuttal argument. Mr. Blandino is the defendant in the case. Uh, got upset by the prosecutor's argument and it and it really is very interesting so i just clipped that portion out of there and uh and you can kind of see as it progresses uh what happens let's do it <laughs> This isn't to make the world a better place. This is so Kim Landino can have fun. This is what he does for fun. He, you heard him himself. If you aren't having fun, you aren't doing it right. That's exactly what this is about. He told you he was having fun up here today, up here yesterday. He was having fun doing all of this because, as he told you, this is what he does. He goes, he targets judges for investigation. And then that's what's fun to him. He set up his office in his house where this is what he does, his illegal work as he called it. This is not a matter of some man that's foolishly set off on some random journey against one judge. By his own words, what you've heard is what his course of conduct is and has been for years. He told you that yeah, he sent these letters to other judges. And despite what defense counsel says, it's not true that he's never gotten a response. He told you himself that he got a response by marshals coming to his house. He knows what he was doing is wrong. He's not just Don Quixote. He's not even close to Don Quixote. He is a man who is obsessed with this cause. He is obsessed with this because this is his only form of enjoyment. This is what he enjoys most in life is seeking these sort of interactions to see what kind of play he can get. If he can get somebody. Here, he thought he did. This, Mr. Blandino, if you aren't having fun, you aren't doing it right, that goes to his motive. You're instructed on motive. It's uh, instruction four. We're not required to prove motive, but it's something that you can consider. Uh, motive is what prompts somebody to act. So, well, Mr. Blandino told you he doesn't really want much for money or anything like that. He doesn't really care about it, right? What he cares about is just going along this path and enjoying his self, what he does. Um, that is what he's accomplished here. That's what he's doing in every single letter. You can see it in his letters as he writes and he puts in these jokes that fall flat. This is him having fun, and that's why we're here, because Mr. Blandino has decided that this is how he's decided he wants to have fun, is by going after judges, sending them inappropriate correspondence, having inappropriate contacts with them in an attempt to see if he can influence their actions, the actions of public officers. Jury exhibit, or I'm sorry, jury instruction number 12. That's the definition of extortion. A person who, with the intent to extort, 
or gain any money or other property. <clears throat> You're instructed as to what extort means. Extort is defined in jury instruction number 12. Extort means influencing another person's actions through withholding exposure of information. That's exactly what he was doing. He was influencing or seeking to influence, yet the intent to influence Mr. Federico's actions in his capacity as a pro tem judge. And he also, because this is an or, right, he sought to gain money. Well, the money was not a large amount, right? $25 in his own pocket. Um, two different ways here that Mr. Blandino has met that first subsection of the first element of extortion, both by withholding information, right, and influencing action, as well as to gain, what, $25. It could be 50 cents. It could be $2 million. It doesn't matter. It's going in his pocket, and that's what it is. It's going to him. And I'll, I'll, I'll just note, because defense counsel argued a lot that, well, this is going to repay some money, and the money's going here and there. It does not matter. That is not an element of the crime. It doesn't matter where the money was going. He said, you need to pay me $25. It doesn't matter what he was going to do with it afterwards. And then, across the whole thing, the next way that you get his intent is Mr. Blandino's intent to influence the actions of a public officer. I'll note for you that throughout every piece of correspondence that Mr. Blandino provided to Mr. Federico, it was addressing Mr. Federico in his capacity as a judge pro tem, in his official capacity. It begins right here, Exhibit 3, the note that he wrote on April 8th. To Michael Federico, pro tem judge, alternate judge, city of Las Vegas. April 25th, 2019. Michael Federico, in his capacity as a judge, pro tem board. When he finally tells them exactly what he wants, Michael Federico, alternate judge for Department 20, Courtroom 1C, Las Vegas Municipal Court, at the Regional Justice Center. The May 9th letter that he dated because he'd been working on it for several days, May 8th, Michael Federico in his capacity as a Judge Pro Temp Court. All of it, ladies and gentlemen, was directed at Mr. Federico in his capacity as a judge pro tempore because everything that he sought to do was influence Mr. Federico's actions as a judge pro tempore, as a public officer. None of it is appropriate. It's illegal. That's the bottom line. Even if you by what defense is saying that he just wanted to sit down. Though, so we'll go into that, and his own words belie that. If he says, Mr. Federico, I'm going to file complaints against you unless you sit down and talk to me, that's extortion. Right? That is extortion. Defense went on and on about Detective Meat said, yeah, you can ask for, you can ask to meet with anybody. Yeah, sure. You can say, Hey, look, I, I want to talk to you. I want to meet you. But you cannot threaten somebody to do anything. This is not, as defense counsel said, a form of theft, as much as it is a form of coercion. This is a way that what the law has done here is made it illegal for people to say, I want you to do something, or else I'm going to do this other thing that you really don't want me to do. Because here, in this case, those things, imputing disgrace upon Michael Federico by filing a complaint with the Nevada Commission on Judicial Discipline, by sending all these things, these horrible allegations to his bosses, all of that, by filing criminal charges with the FBI, all of those impute disgrace. 
And that brings us to exactly what the threat was. Here he threatened, Mr. Blandino threatened, to accuse Mr. Federico of a crime, namely the federal civil rights crime, and accusing him of that uh, to the FBI, as well as to uh, expose him to disgrace. Disgrace in being what he believed is an unethical judge who's violated the code and violated his rights, knowing, as his own words stated within the letter from May 9th, knowing exactly what this means. Look at that. Mr. Blandino says, when, in the very few times that he actually speaks in the first person, I would want to know that a person who worked with the firm that had a prominent web page was not bringing any disrepute in any way to the firm or its name. Mr. Blandino knows that that's what he's threatening. Knows that's his whole intent here. To expose or impute disgrace upon Mr. Federico. You're instructed. Jury instruction number 21. Disgrace means to humiliate or cause loss of favor or standing. You heard from Mr. Federico what the effects of these actions could be and would be, and it was humiliating and could cause loss of standing and favor. In fact, when Mr. Plandino starts ramping up his behavior, right, when he doesn't get the response that he wants, and I'm not talking about the first response or the second response, I'm talking about the response on May 15, 2019. After that letter that he sent on May 9, 2019, when he doesn't get a response back from Mr. Federico, and he ramps it up to the next level, he makes good on his threat. He makes good on his threat to expose Mr. Federico to disgrace by actually sending everything that he's already sent to the managing board of directors of this firm, all of his bosses. And what did Mr. Federico tell you about that? It was humiliating. It was humiliating. That's it. Mr. Blandino has committed extortion so many different ways in this case. Not just one. There's not just one avenue of extortion here. It, and it begins with Mr. Blandino. It begins right there in the note that he wrote. On April 8, 2019, I am ready to begin filing my complaints against you indicating that it's for his courtroom activities, including violations of the code. He indicates that he's required by his religious beliefs and practices to give him an opportunity to negotiate a settlement. Please let me know within the next 10 days, indicating how serious he is because he's had, he's been effective. He's been effective because his last two letters have resulted in letters of caution. So please don't take this matter lightly. This note doesn't say, hey, I just want to sit down and I want an apology, Mr. Federico. It doesn't say that. It doesn't say, hey, I'm going to file a complaint against you regardless, but I'd love an apology. It doesn't say that. What it says is I'm going to file a complaint or we can negotiate. Extortion begins there. Then, when he doesn't hear anything from Mr. Federico, um, he goes to the Regional Justice Center. He told you that he was all around that day. He was all around. Yet somehow, he walks into the courtroom still carrying his tray of stuff with his shoes untied from walking through security. And he told you that before he ever got into that courtroom, he looked right into it and he could see Mr. Federico right there on the bench. Okay. Now, 
He goes in, he sits down, he gets kicked out. Mr. Federico, in no unclear terms, in his capacity as a judge, in that moment, says, you need to leave because you came to my private law office, don't stop me. Defense, and the defendant himself told you, if only he had said, just don't come back, I don't want to talk to you, that's it, nothing like that, then that would have been it. <laughs> there are no clear terms. Get out of the courtroom, don't stalk people. But what does Mr. Blandino do? Well, now he's getting the reaction he wants. Now, Mr. Blandino is having fun. And if you aren't having fun, you aren't doing it right. So now, Mr. Blandino knows he's on the right path. The path that he has set forth upon to see what he can get out of Mr. Federico. So he goes, he files a customer feedback complaint for whatever that's worth, um, and takes that and attaches it to a letter that he went home immediately and typed. April 25th, 2019, this letter. This is the letter that, once again, to Michael Federico, in his official capacity as a judge pro tem board, as we discussed, the subject line itself indicates what's occurring here. The subject line itself indicates, I mean, it might as well say, subject, extortion. Desire to desire not to have to file formal complaint with Nevada Commission on Judicial Discipline. That's not how this works. If a judge is doing some, does something unethical, they should just be reported. They should be reported. Anybody that's doing something unethical should just be reported. You, or Mr. Blake, you know I should say, as a private citizen, anybody. In this, in this country, doesn't have a right to dangle something over someone's head to say, you are unethical. Now I own you. You committed a crime. Now you have to do what I say. That is extortion. That is the purpose of this crime. And in this particular letter, Mr. Blankio discusses thoroughly what he'd initially started talking about. In addition to identifying himself as a volunteer investigator for the Nevada Commission on Judicial Discipline, not, not helping the Nevada Commission on Judicial Discipline, he is for the Nevada Commission on Judicial Discipline, indicating I came to your offices uh, to see if we could resolve the complaint without having to use scarce re judicial and Nevada Commission on Judicial Discipline Resources. He indicates that he's done so with other misbehaving judges. And then he goes on, so to avoid having the Nevada Commission on Judicial Discipline subject complaint to their protocols, I once again reach out to you to resolve this matter between you and I, or your attorney and I, if you wish to have an intermediary. You remember that whole argument the defense counsel had about all Mr. Blandino wanted to do was to sit down with Mr. Federico? April 25th, 2019, he's telling Mr. Federico he doesn't even have to deal with him directly. He can have intermediaries. That's this whole sit down thing, it's not even a real thing. Because you take a look at Mr. Blandino's words, he didn't care. He wants to see what he can get out of Mr. Federico, whether it's Mr. Federico dealing with him directly or Mr. Federico's intermediate. And then, no, uh, please know that I am very serious about following through to the best of strength that God gives me to do so. In any case, the sacrifice that I spend in time, inconvenience, and discomfort is very small compared to what they suffered to establish freedom and liberty 
based upon the very principles that God and his son Jesus would wish for all on this planet to enjoy. The sacrifice that I spend in time, inconvenience, and discomfort Bomber, we missed the best part of that when Kim blows up. I might have to go back. Whatever, it's on the playlist. Is this Alex or is this YouTube? Someone needs to stop this production value. Make me look bad. <laughs> That's YouTube intro. How come I always get that crappy music? some negative, some positive. I've been hit on the head with a big giant purse just for wearing this shirt. Atheists have attacked me. So on that was where that's exhibit J. Oh no. Glad I have my ASCAT for this. Take your for the record. Like that you don't got uh, is this it? Joseph Kirsten, 13876. We're on? Representing Mr. Bandina, who is to my left, who wishes me to tell the court that he is here in the custody of parole and probation. He's on parole and probation. He's on probation, Your Honor. Okay. I, I believe last time I said he was at liberty and he wanted me to correct that. All right. That being said, then this was a continuation of the trial. State had rested on this initial case. All right, and then defense. For the witness, anybody who's a witness, potential witness on the plan, do matter, please wait outside and do not discuss her testimony with any other witness. That being said, state, uh, the rested defense. You wish to call any witnesses? Uh, before I do that, Your Honor, I'd like to uh, move to dismiss. Um, I don't know if you want to argument on that or not. Or Oh, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Your Honor. Essentially, Your Honor, it's the state's, uh, sorry, yeah, the defense's position that uh, the state did not prove beyond, uh, by, uh, uh, beyond a reasonable doubt that, as required, that Mr. Guendino was a resident of the state of Nevada as required by the statutes that he's being charged with. So as you recall, there were multiple witnesses. Uh, none of them actually proved that he was a resident. And in fact, I think one of the, the, the premier the witnesses uh, from PMP was showing records that Mr. Blandino brought, uh, had filled out. And they were oh, saying that Lord. His, he proved, they proved residents, I guess, by uh, listing his uh, a Las Vegas addresses. As you recall, we pointed out that anytime Mr. Blandino filled out one of those documents, it was as a care of. There was no proof that he was actually a resident. As well, uh, yeah. Yeah, he's really the record, <laughs> um, and I believe we asked the court to take judicial notice of it, was Mr. Blandino's 
I always get the term precision or <clears throat> your citizenship. Yeah, loss of nationality. Hey, fine. Loss of nationality. He is not a citizen of the United States. He rescinded that many years ago. Um, so as a result, he's not a resident. He can't be a resident. So the statute oh, man. Uh, requiring the statute requiring him to register his vehicle only applies to residents. He's not a resident. Then with regard to the statute that regarding the um, the license, the, the actual uh, I'm sorry, Your Honor, the actual possession of a light driver's license, it was recently changed, but the prior one that we're operating under in this case said specifically, if you don't have a driver's license, there's two things you can do. The state shall require him to get a driver's license, or he has to produce a document that he can't get a driver's license, which we did file into the record. There's a document that says he is, again, he rescinded his citizenship, and the DMV will not give him a driver's license. So as a result of that, um, again, I don't believe there's I don't believe there's any issue there at all for the state to um, pursue. Um, so given all of that, the totality there, we're looking at a situation where there's one statute that just really doesn't apply because he can't get a driver's license. And the other, the state has not proven that he is a resident requiring him to have a Nevada uh, um, registration. Now, the interesting part, Your Honor, is it's not like he was driving around willy-nilly without a registration. He had a legitimately registered vehicle in the state of Montana. So he's not driving around without a driver's license or, or in, you know, anything like that. He is driving. It's a permanent driver's a permanent registration. So, given all of that, I think the state has failed to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that uh, Mr. Blandino is guilty of the crimes they have alleged to have charged him with. Before proceeding further, Mr. Dickerson, I got a notice of denial of disqualification on NRS 42.550. That's the document that was talking about. It's in, in the record. I don't know if you have a copy of that or not. We may have a copy of it somewhere here. Can, can I see that just for the time being? Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, that was important what he talked about. I don't know if it's an exhibit. Right, right. The note it indicates that uh, unsatisfactory documentation to receive a driver's license, right? Yeah, that's the one you're talking about. Yes, sir. Right? Okay, no, I just want to make sure yes. because it's referring. We have not had that exhibit posted. I understand it's a motion uh, to dismiss the charge. Yeah. So Mr. Blandino uh, shows up to the DMV without the documentation necessary to get a driver's license, and all of a sudden he can drive around in the state of Nevada without a driver's license. That's his argument. It's further argument. Yeah, yeah, he, I, it's my time to argue. Right. Objection, Your Honor. But no, no, he has the right to argue. Okay. He's, he's, yeah, he's he's right. Right. He this, this is your motion, so you have a right to respond to it. Go ahead. Uh, and then further, that he's no longer a U.S. citizen because he filed some paperwork apparently with the with Nevada Secretary of State. Um, this is all below. That's the bottom line. Under NRS 483.114, what we've already proven is that his legal residence is here in the state of Nevada over on 16th Street. I believe it's 441 North 16th Street is what we've established over and over and over again. And, it, and that's been his address for years. It was his address at the time of this offense. Um, and because of that, he is a resident. Uh, we look to his argument that he's given up his U.S. citizenship. Uh, so you... Bottom line is, a person cannot renounce their U.S. citizenship just by filing some paperwork uh, with the Nevada Secretary of State. It just doesn't work that way. In fact, that's that's an issue that is reserved for the United States government, not for the Secretary of State of Nevada, not for the defendant on his own. Uh, this is something that is in law under uh, Chapter 8 of the United States Code under the Immigration and Naturalization Act. In fact, this is uh, not only would the defendant need to sign paperwork, but he would actually need to uh, swear it out, and he would need to do that with the federal government. Here I have a case. I'll provide a copy 
to defense counsel. This comes out of Washington, D.C. This is Lozado Colon, the U.S. Department of State. Here's a copy for your honor. This case generally talks about what occurs when a person renounces their U.S. citizenship. Um, and here in this case, what's unique is that um, it was actually denied. So this was an individual that was a citizen of Puerto Rico who sought to renounce its United States citizenship in you know, a, a separatist effort, uh, but remaining in Puerto Rico. Uh, and because he sought to remain in Puerto Rico, similar to how Mr. Blandino seeks to remain in the state of Nevada, um, it was denied. And so he was not able to renounce his U.S. citizenship. It's not something that he could just do really no. The fact of the matter is, is that uh, Mr. Blandino is a United States citizen, despite him not wanting to be a United States citizen. All right. um, on the driver's license, I mean, you know, he showed me documents under NRS 43.4550 request to the qualification. That statute specifically says that a person must be uh, must provide a driver's license. Uh, must be driving with a driver's license. And if not, much court shall require any person addicted to obtain a valid driver's license to use under the notice of disqualification of the department. Which he has done, but that doesn't exclude or excuse the right to drive. It's unlawful for any person to drive a motor vehicle on a public highway, street or highway in the state without being a holder of a valid driver's license. He doesn't even say that a valid, your valid driver's license. It's a valid license. So, uh, right. and whether or not he's given, and I don't mean to interrupt, yeah. notice of denial of disqualification is one of the requirements that the court is required to order him to do to show that he can't get a license. That doesn't exclude the driving. So, uh, as to the no driver's license issue, the motion is denied at that time. As to the registration, you understand the yeah. argument they're making on that. That is not know. a resident, right? That it is a registered vehicle out of Montana. Proceed on that argument. Yeah, so that goes to the his whole argument there is that he renounces U.S. citizenship, so he can't be a resident, and then. Anytime he's written his address, which has been established as in fact being his address, where he lives, his legal residence, uh, he writes Kara or C slash O in front of his address. Uh, it's just typical sovereign citizen rhetoric to try to get around the laws of this state, the state, and the laws of the United States. Uh, it bottom line is it, that is also below, right? We have proven that for years he's lived in this address based upon records based upon testimony. Uh, this is where his registered address has been for all these years and including the time that uh, this stop happened. So he is resident, that's the bottom line. Uh, is re renouncing, renouncing his US citizenship is it, not an actual thing. He has not done that. Right. Mr. Gerson, your response. Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, uh, I think umbrage with the constant use of the word baloney. I, 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 come on. However, Title 8 U.S. Code 1481, Section A2, basically says a person who is a national of the United States, whether by birth or naturalization, shall lose his nationality by voluntarily performing any of the following acts with the intention of relinquishing United States nationality. Section 2, taking an oath or making an affirmation or other form of declaration of allegiance to a foreign state or a political subdivision thereof after having attained the age of 18 years. Mr. Blandino has done that. That's the only requirement. It doesn't say you have to go to the State Department or do anything like that. He went to the county clerk and made a declaration that he, in his mind, is a citizen of the Kingdom of Israel. <laughs> the, the, the clerk of the county took that in, wrote it, and granted it. So as far as he's concerned, whether or not that was, you know, the, the procedure in his mind, that would uh, obviate any intent on the part of Mr. Blandino, thus not making it criminal because to him, he is not a, a citizen of the United States or and he is not a resident of the state of Nevada. I like that. So under 8 U.S.C. Right, where, where are we? That's where we go with that. With, <laughs> 
subsection two, A two. I'm sorry. You saying with regard to the, um, and again, with regard to the, and this is interesting. Oh dear. My filing uh, papers with the Nevada uh, Secretary of State. Anderson, sorry, <laughs> uh, actually got it wrong. It's NRS 483.141, not 114. It's 141. This is, uh, which is what he was talking about, but the, the statute that talks about, which is 550, which is the one that actually talks about the driver's license. Just give me a second round so I can find it. There were two statutes. It was, it was modified, it was amended in 2023, post the incident, Aww. where it initially said, oh, uh, uh, yeah, you drive with a, on the driver's license, you either, um, you have the court shall require any person convicted of violating the section to obtain a driver's license or produce a notice of disqualification in the department. Then after 2023, they re, they re, uh, um, input that statute and say, if you don't, now you're guilty of a misdemeanor. So we're talking about the statute that does not contain the guilty of a misdemeanor um, uh, information. So uh, again, the, the standard really isn't even beyond a reasonable doubt because we're not using the misdemeanor language in that sense. But again, oh, yeah. Mr. Blandino yeah. has complied <laughs> with the statutes that asked him, if you're not going to do this, either either get a driver's license or produce this document. And, and my point is, what is the court going to do if they find that he is, you know, guilty of this? It's either require him to get a driver's license or provide a document. He provided the document. But there's a fine attached to that without being suspicious. There is no, not your honor. I, I'm sorry, I apologize. I don't mean to be saying that. Oh, but there isn't, your honor, because again, the way our system works is if there's no punishment provided for in a statute, we default to the, it's a misdemeanor, and misdemeanors default to the six-month, $1,000 fine. But that does not apply if the statute has the punishment built into the statute. And again, one, it's not a misdemeanor because you can see the, the, the legislature fixed this in 2023. There must have been some kind of a problem by adding the language guilty of a misdemeanor. So our argument would be one, it's not a misdemeanor at the time that this happened. But number two, the punishment is yeah. contained in the statute. You can either require him to get a driver's license or have him file this document. That's a little different then, because by <laughs> finding him guilty of that, then I'm restricted on what I can issue penalty wise. Your argument right now is that the state hasn't had its burden as is shown in the initial case. That's that again. That, that is correct, Your Honor. And so I, I, kind of get in front I, of, I know, understand that I may be on not the best. Where are we exactly in the license this? aspect? But I may be in the beginning. Part, I hate to tell you. As far as the like as he's, the, is he doing uh, a motion to uh, dismiss the that? registration yes. is concerned again. Okay. I mean, what can I no, say? The arguments here, yeah, nothing. You saw the record every time. You know, of course not. Mr. Landino <laughs> smart like fox. He put in, down man. care of every time that he was asked to put his his red his uh, address in. The state simply has not proven that he is a resident of Nevada, requiring him to register a vehicle <laughs> in Nevada. His vehicle was registered oh, yeah. in Montana. I, I, I saw him registration. in the courthouse today, <laughs> and he was showing me all his NRS about how he's not. Not a resident of Nevada. Who, Kim himself? Yeah, yeah, no, I had a chance to talk to him. Or Joe. Kim. Uh. Mr. Blandino is asking me to just remind the court that the requirement is of a legal resident. That is the term in the statute that is legal residence. As a result, again, we don't know. Here, let's pause it one sec, though. I mean, that when he says my client wants me to do, you know what that's code for. <laughs> yeah. Correct, Your Honor. Oh, yeah. As well, Your Honor, as well. And again, as the license. But I'm sorry, as well as the license. Well, Your Honor, without I mean, my client's going to testify, I mean, but what I can tell you is um, Mr. Uh, Dickerson did put into evidence Mr. Blandino's uh, Kingdom of Israel passport, which he believes affords him the opportunity to drive 
as a resident of the kingdom of Israel. <laughs> so again, the question of, again, the state has been the showing beyond a reasonable doubt that they fit all the elements of the crime. That Mr. Blandino, you know, fit all the elements of the crime. I don't not, I do not believe that Mr. Blandino was yes, intentionally exactly. Uh, exactly. you know doing this. Again, I think I'm better ground on better grounds on the resident argument than the driver's license argument. But again, that's that's kind of where we stand right now. Right. So to, to one thing, to the kingdom of Israel. When the kingdom of Israel existed, there were no cars. There was no driver's license. That's because the kingdom of Israel existed until approximately 930 BC. <laughs> Nice. Nice. History lesson here. Right now. Oh, he looked that up. He had to Google that. In the law or in fact. Is that just common knowledge? <laughs> do we want to talk last? Yeah, I know. But you know, do we want to talk about that? The signing of the Constitution, the Second Amendment, AR-15. Or further? No. Uh, <laughs> no, that's quite all right. Uh, deny the motion at this time. I think there was another yes, let's get into it. I mean, it's still three sentence. hours, and they didn't even get into State, it. Uh, defense, call your first witness. <laughs> well, Your Honor, I understand that Mr. Blandino himself would like to testify. As uh, the defendant in the case, Your Honor, I have admonished him of his Fifth Amendment rights to not do that. I have discussed with him <laughs> the implications, pros, cons, etc. Mr. Blandino, after hearing that, has decided that he still wishes to testify. Uh, given that, and knowing what he may or he intends to testify about, um, I don't believe that um, I can assist him uh, in his testimony uh, for various reasons. I'll be happy to explain them. Oh, get your popcorn uh, ready. Or if you wish. However, uh, Mr. Blandino wishes to testify. Uh, to, I, yes. You want a minute or two to talk to him because I'm going to canvas him during his right to testify. Uh, no, Your Honor, I'll be <laughs> I'm assuming you have already. We have, Your Honor, to ad nauseum. So, again, <laughs> I, uh, I believe Mr. Blandino is going to have to testify in the narrative without my assistance. Um, my father, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. You can finish up. So, he's yeah, not that, testifying I mean, in the narrative. You're a great guy. Testifying in the narrative, <laughs> uh, however you would uh, like, if you'd like him at the table on the, on the, he'll, he'll come up on the stand, stand etc. So, uh, Mr. Blandino, can you please rise? Oh. Sir, you understand oh. you have a constitutional right to testify and a constitutional right not to testify at this proceeding. You understand? I gave him that suit, by the way. You understand that we can comment on the fact that maybe you decided to testify or not to testify. You understand? You it's you nice. Your soul it's a nice one. It's a double breasted banana republic. republic. It's a good one, man. <laughs> I do understand. You understand that the state can then inquire as to any prior criminal history that you have. I don't know if you have any prior, prior criminal history. They can inquire as to that, find out those conviction, and move on from there without getting into the facts of it, as long as you acknowledge that you have a prior criminal history if you do. You understand that? I do understand. Now, you understand that once you start testifying, that uh, you are not allowed to then stop testifying if you decide not to, to invoke your Fifth Amendment right now to testify or stop testifying, then the entire testimony will be tossed out. Do you understand that, sir? So you'll be subject oh. to nice examination by the state. Hey, Debbie. I hey. believe you're incorrect. On that. I think that's for a grand jury, but when it comes to you as the fact finder, my understanding is if there's a particular question that might be outside the scope of these proceedings and it might cause me to be a witness against myself in something separate that from sense. this, I could invoke the Fifth Amendment. That's true. It's something different. What I'm saying is if you cut up here and you start testifying against the facts specific to this case. Right. Then you refuse to answer any further questions. You can toss out your testimony. You that, that that's understand. Relating only to this case, and I do agree that right. if I start asking you anything outside right. about any other criminal activity, your attorney would then ask that that be stricken or removed. Well, it, so I, 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 I do not like using that word incriminate. The, the constitutional provision is that care what you don't 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 you understand. Yeah. Though. Sorry to disappoint you, Debbie. Yeah. <laughs> to these facts, the elements of these charges, and you decide to invoke the fifth at that time, I'll uh, draw your entire testimony. Do you understand that, sir? I, as we discussed it here and clarified Do you yes. wish to testify or not to testify I at this time? Wish to testify. Do you understand that the court controls <laughs> the amount of evidence that comes, the kind of evidence that comes in, 
And if I find that the testimony that you're giving is not relevant, I can then stop you from testifying or have you move on. Do you understand that, sir? Yes. All right. Move on. That being said, is it your decision here today to testify? Yes. And you've done so after discussing this matter with your attorney? Yes. Come take the stand. Raise your right hand. Please support to be sworn. I, I'm, I'm my religious beliefs and practices. And the <laughs> <laughs> where, where this, I cannot raise my hand. I cannot swear or affirm, but I can declare under penalty of perjury <laughs> that I will tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing okay. but the truth, and that I can be prosecuted. Yeah, you just can't make anything easy. Is that acceptable? Yeah, today you're going to do is not under penalty of perjury and is not providing this part of under God, you understand? You will affirm and give an affidavit regarding that matter. You understand? You will raise your right hand and so on that matter. You understand? I cannot do that. I can testify under penalty of perjury, understanding that I have to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Do I solemnly swear? You affirm that the testimony that you're not swear or doubt. Mr. Gerson. I cannot swear on that. Talk to him on this matter because he's. I, I think I'm applying to Gordon versus I. I will give him the affidavit and I acknowledge that he doesn't have to swear under uh, God or any, any deity. I will give him that. He is correct on that. But he will follow my directions. I can declare under penalty of perjury. Can I declare under penalty of perjury? the custody. So if you want a minute or two to talk to him, you can talk to him. Thank you, Your Honor. I may. Do you want me to go down there or him come over? Oh you my down god. There? You want me to go down there? Just come over here. By the way, he did all this in the last trial. I I don't know if his religion changed. Inform me. He cannot. Uh, he cannot affirm or swear. He will only declare. I have explained to him the situation. I, I don't know where to go from here. I, I have had this conversation with him numerous times, and again, we're kind of where we are, um, and that is why he is there right now and testifying on his own. So we've gone full money Python now. <laughs> He's got a right to testify and affirm that his testimony is going to be truthful and under penalty of perjury without having to uh, swear an allegiance to anything on that. Right, so the statutes uh, do declare. Very clear at Article 50.035. Before testifying, every witness shall be required to declare that he or she will testify truthfully by oath or affirmation administered in a form calculated to awaken his or her <laughs> conscience. Yes, and impress his or her mind with the duty to do so. Uh -huh. So then it goes on to say it's sufficient and it gives an option there. I guess that's how I read that. I guess that I would just inquire is why he can't uh, swear or affirm to tell the truth. Like the well, no, I think he's agreeing to tell the truth. He just can't do an affirmation under, under God. Uh, so I guess we have you do solemnly swear to affirm the evidence of you telling in this matter. I said the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. That's an affirmation. I think that would satisfy the statute, correct? Each word you shall be required to declare that he or she shall testify truthfully by oath or affirmation, administered in a form calculated to awaken his or her conscience to impress on his or her mind to do so. So we're asking that you do solemnly affirm. You testify that the evidence you will give in this, in this matter, which we the state of Nevada and Mr. Dennis Mindino, shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Consultation of that permission shall be made by the answering I do. Right? That works. All right. Yeah. Sir, you, you saw just got to the oath while I was gone. We did give this issue between the state of Nevada and the case of Dennis versus Den Kim Dennis Mindino. The truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Here we are. Can I consult with counsel? Yeah. <laughs> this is I already assault, uh, consulted with him. We hey, are hey, confirmed hey, that you will give the affidavit. Assertation of that uh, affirmation shall be made by the minister. There we go. Case law, Gordon versus Idaho, that affirming and swearing, and the court, no court can mandate it, has to be by a particular form. All it has to do 
is strike the person's conscience, which it does, <laughs> that I could be prosecuted for perjury. All the federal forms, the state forms of habeas, uh, and even Nevada, uh, Nevada revised statutes allow for unsworn declarations. And if it, it's affirmed, if if I can use the word I concur, I concur that you everything affirm, be, or you can affirm. I you concur to tell the truth? You just swear. You just use an, a rose by any other name is still a rose. You call it a tulip, it doesn't make it a tulip. Is Either that a thing? You solemnly affirm the evidence and testimony you shall give in this matter between the state of Nevada and King Dennis Blandino shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but I can solemnly state that I have, and I can be prosecuted for perjury if I do not tell the truth. I mean, I have my conscience is as struck maybe more than 90%. You do not affirm that you will the evidence and testimony you shall give. I cannot issue. use the word affirm. Sir. All right, Mr. Blandino, I don't, I mean, Mr. Uh, What's wrong with the word affirm? Are you your affirmation from him, which is the uh, subsection of the word affirm, affirmation. Okay. Yeah, right, right. I, I mean, I, it's an affirmation. The, the root word is affirm. Yes, that's, that's an affirmation. I, I, I don't disagree I, with you. I, 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 I can use the word confirm, confirm, Judge. I can use the word confirm. You can use the word affirm. affirm is the same as swearing. <laughs> okay, right, right, right. Affirm, and we have no problem. You know, again. Yeah, he wants he, to see swearing. He's about to hear it. Probably. Gordon versus Idaho, I think it was. In oh, that case, that's oh, his shit. problem. Obviously, you understand why he's now up there on his own without me. I don't know. I don't know what else to, other than quoting that case. You know, this is his solemn belief, or I can't even use solemn, but this is his belief that he can't do what you're asking him to do. I, I have nothing further to add to that. Mr. Dickerson, I don't know how this is so I testified in district court with Judge Levitt, and she accepted what I have said. I, every other court I've been in where I've testified, and I have testified in other courts, they've had no problem with this. I didn't even anticipate it be a problem, but just in case, I gave Gordon versus Idaho, which has been sustained throughout the years. That was an 85 case, I believe, or 87. It says that no court can mandate, it has to be in a particular form. As long as the individual given the testimony I by oath or testimony is struck in Miranda versus uh, Miranda their conscience versus state, I can give you oath or affirmation. That before testifying, every witness shall be required to declare that he or she will testify to me by oath or affirmation administered in the form calculated to awaken his or her conscience. So we go by oath. Except that, Mr. Dickerson. Yes. yes. All right. So, by oath, you agree that testifying that the information that you are to give is true is uh, truthful information under the penalty of perjury, and you will testify truthfully under oath. My oath, my yes will be yes. My yes. All right. No. I understand that. All right. Have a seat. Thank you. Uh, this is a uh, Mr. Blandino. You may proceed to the elements of these charges. You may give like. Uh, Testimony by way of uh, I have to give a foundation first, of course. My name is Kim Blandino for the transcript. Uh, I'll use the middle initial D, Dennis, I never used. So it's K I M, middle initial D, and then D L A N D I N O. I am, uh, I was born in uh, 1955 in uh, Great Falls, Montana. I have an exhibit A to that. Here's a certification of birth record. Montana, I'd like to introduce that. That's exhibit A for the defense. Uh, so he can testify, Your Honor, but he's not going to be representing himself in moving in to the tough yard. Mr. Gernstein? Yeah, Your Honor, uh, here's the problem. I don't know what he was saying. Give him a declaration. I mean, I don't think the question of whether or not he was born as a citizen or he, not. Again, Your Honor, you understand why I am sitting here and not leading this testimony now. I, I, I don't know. I don't see the relevancy of it. It'll be court I'll get to that. allowed in there. Go ahead. Or court exhibit only. Go ahead. Okay. Is that going to be entered into? It is court exhibit. Court exhibit. Okay. okay. The question, the issue is whether or not on the date of September 16, 2022, resident failed to obtain a Nevada registration and driving without a valid license. Those are the issues that we need to address. Right. Exhibit B is a letter of identification did by my late parents, 1998, that I am who I say I'm in referencing. 
the passport that the defense has is exhibit two or one. I don't know which one it is. That'll be exhibit D. Exhibit C is my Arizona identification legally obtained showing the address Highway 95 number 505, which is an address that has been maintained by me uh, for at least 25 years, I think, which is not my legal address. It's also in care of uh, Arizona. That's the copy of the Arizona ID. This was presented by Judge or by Mar Officer Martinez. And I presented that to her and she said, well, where's your license? That was when the question of the license was asked. Exhibit D is a declaration of exp exp expatriation filed with the county recorder here in 1993. This is a copy of a certified copy that uh, after researching the law and at Title VIII subsection two allows me to lose my nationality without renouncing it at a consulate or anything I intended to bow. Can I object to him even having documents up there? It's, it's well, inappropriate that he's up there with all this stuff. If I may, Your Honor. Yeah, I, I, again, right. Your Honor, it does go towards his defense and I'll allow it to do it. All right. Go ahead. Okay, then. I'm going to ask that everything he has up there, then when he gets off, when we take a break in between my cross, that I review every single thing that's up there. Of course. He will well, 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 he whatever he's relying upon in testimony, obviously, you have the right to review that. I'm sorry, what word did he say he will do what, sir? All right. He'll review it. Oh, review it, okay. He has the right to review all those documents. Oh, no, I agree. All right, go ahead. Okay, this document, uh, clearly, and it was done in 1993, found, filed with the county recorder here, not with the Secretary of State, but it was filed with the county uh, recorder, and this is, these are certified copies that I have of these documents. That, that gave my declaration and statement and purpose to give up my, to lose my unit's citizenship, to make a vow to Jesus and to the kingdom of Israel. It is quite a lengthy document. There are many pages in here and I have stayed true to this since that 1993. Um, I, I've been asked to vote, register to vote. And I said, look, I'm not, I had a US citizenship at one time because uh, I was born in this country, but I expatriated uh, about 7,500 people a year expatriate from US to some other country or entity or something. So it's not an uncommon thing to do. Uh, it's not required to do it at a consulate. So that would be exhibit D, or wait a minute, let's see. It's D, Ken. Is it D? Okay, I've got a list of attorney here. This, uh, this is an application for uh, driving privileges at the thing, which is what I had to look at when, before they gave me this denial or disqualification that was filed in this court. In order for me to get this, I would have to perjure myself because it says, I hereby certify under penalty of perjury that all statements in this application are true and correct. And as this later document, the disqualification that was referenced oh, yes. earlier would state, it's a real thing. He hasn't done uh, it. I'm not thing. a resident of Nevada. Therefore, I cannot get a driver's license, among, among other reasons. But uh, if I were to say that that 441 is my legal residence, I would be committing perjury if I signed this document. I don't believe any court in the land can require me to commit perjury. Then, what do you have marked as a DVD? Okay, this is the notice of disqualification, and I want to post this in as a an exhibit. Uh, that's exhibit G. Um, the thing is, is they said, look, you can't get a driver's license for a number of reasons, and they post them, and they ran out of lines. This was uh, validated, and this actually is a copy of a certified copy. I asked them to certify this copy for authenticity's sake and to be authenticated under the Nevada Revised Statutes on Authentication of Documents. But the main thing was that um, uh, I cannot, under my religious beliefs and practices, I cannot enter into a contract with the, with the state of Nevada 
the state of Nevada basically declared war on me anyway in 1992 when criminal charges were brought against me. That's Exhibit G. Exhibit H. This is a public law 97.2 AO 96 statute 1211. It's where the Congress said uh, they authorized, they designated 1983 as the National Year of the Bible in recognition of both the formative influence of the Bible, our nation, and the need to study and to apply the teachings of the Holy Scripture. This is what I, in part, relied on in losing my nationality in 1993, where I saw that Ahab and Jezebel was elected co-presidents of the United States. That would be Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton. Their co-presidency, as they called it, I said, there's something rotten in Denmark here, and I need mean, Listen, we're focusing on I understand that. that. So I understand that you're saying that you don't, you're not a resident of the United States or a resident of Nevada <laughs> or a citizen of the United States. So I'm allowing you a little leeway on that, but we will okay. move on from there. You understand? Okay, I've got two addresses for Israel. Now, the state of Israel, separate from the kingdom of Israel, the state of Israel at present is in stewardship for the kingdom of Israel when Jesus returns for a second time, which is predicted, prophesied, and it's going to happen at some point into the future. We don't know. So I've got two addresses that I can go to as soon as I am able to go back to, or to Israel, which it would be the state of Israel, but... And by the time I get there, it could be the Kingdom of Israel. This is the Mount Olives Hotel, 97 Rava Al Adawaya Street, Jerusalem. Could be. And then there's the Abraham Jerusalem <laughs> Hotel in, um, in uh, Jerusalem as well. I also have written on this, this is Exhibit A, uh, Exhibit I, 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 Exhibit. And it shows that Montana registration address, which was on the registration uh, and the plates that Officer Mead or Detective Mead then confiscated. That's a care of uh, 31903 Lost Creek Lane, Ronan, Montana. I can go to that residence at any time. That's the state of my, my birth. Exhibit J. This is a shirt I was wearing that night. I mean, the same shirt I was wearing. I've got 20 some of these. It says Trump now, Jesus forever, socialism equals slavery, savior equals self-rule. As part of my ministry and being an ambassador for Jesus, um, this has been a godsend. God called me to make these shirts. And wherever I go, I get comments, some negative, some positive. I've been hit on the head with a big giant purse just for wearing this shirt, atheists that attack me. So on that was wearing, that's exhibit J. Exhibit K is the Montana registration at issue. It was a permanent registration. Actually, they say it's permanent and uh, it really only is good until the year 9999, so it expires. Uh, so. That gives the Lost Creek Lane address, 31903 Lost Creek Lane, Ronan, Montana, which I can go to at any time. A friend of mine owns that property. That is. He doesn't, but he could. <laughs> you never know what he'll do, after. really. <laughs> Detective Mead stole the license plates with no cause off the truck on that night of that stop. These are permanent replacement plates. Stole because the officers can. Uh, escape the license plates if they find that it's unregistered and it's a violation. It, it was clearly not registered. I produced the registration. It is stricken, that statement. Go ahead. Okay, they confiscated it. Can I use that? You can say that, yes. Okay, they confiscated the license plate. I was never able to recover them. I had to get uh, replacement plates from Montana. And these are those. This is Exhibit L. Exhibit M <laughs> is the clerk of the U.S. District Court. This is an envelope. From there, I have uh, some suits pending, and you'll notice on there, care of 441 uh, Street. If I were to maintain that as my legal address with the court, they could prosecute me for some kind of misstatement or false statement to the court. Uh, exhibit M, this is a letter from then Chief Judge Dew because they were having some filing problems and stuff. 
of the U.S. District Court for, for the District of Nevada. It has the care of 441 North 16th Street. Again, this is dated May 12, 2023. And that's Exhibit N. Uh, this has my change of address from the jail, I think. No, it wasn't the jail, the May 10, 2023 basement, showing the care of 441 North 16. Exhibit O, this is a, I was prosecuted in Las Vegas Municipal Court in 2000. It started, the ticket started in 2013. I went to trial for not having a driver's license. I was found not guilty. I, unfortunately, this is not a certified copy that I can certify under penalty of perjury that they were found not guilty. Showing you just can't swear to it. Documents that were presented here in the, in the or affirm it. Prosecution's exhibit, and then on my exhibit, I was found not guilty of not of driving without a valid the same charge here of a valid driver's license. So that was a uh, there was no judge or jury. Obviously, that was Judge Roger in municipal court, Susan Roger. Exhibit P. Uh -oh. Did you just bad mouth Judge Susan Roger? I pulled those statutes out of there, Joe. Can I get those statutes? Okay, what? You just have them memorized? Before I did all this, I wanted to make sure I was not violating the law. I don't want to violate the law. As a matter of fact, presently, and I'll have this in a uh, subsequent exhibit. I am uh, mandated under conditions of my probation to obey all laws, local, state, and federal. And of course, <laughs> if any of those happen to be in violation of the Constitution, I still have not been negated the possibility to make a constitutional argument. The statute is unconstitutional at the time. But if it is about the kingdom of Israel, I'll obey it. Um, before doing embarking on all this in 1993 and throughout the years so I studied the law carefully from the, uh, the 80s on, I have uh, studied the statutes and uh, that are relevant to this very issue. And NRS, uh, this is one of the statutes I researched, NRS 293.487. No person may gain or lose residence by reason of her presence or absence while skipping down to three an inmate of a public institution. So on let me, that, let me let me stop you there yeah. because these are arguments for whether or not he's guilty. This is not an argument. This is what I studied, Judge. So that's not relevant. <laughs> Isn't that foundation relevant at this point? That is an argument. You're, you're arguing the law, bro. Application be dismissed. Okay. This is testimony today regarding whether or not he was driving on a motor vehicle on the highway which the public has access to, where you were not in possession of the. A valid driver's license or a valid driver's license, and you were not where your vehicle was not registered on September 16th, 2022. That is what we're focusing on. Yeah, and my testimony. These other arguments are legal arguments. Mr. Gersten can make those arguments at the time of the final argument. All right. Okay. So we'll but move my, on from there. My we'll testimony. Move on from there. My testimony. We'll move on from there. I am moving on. All right. So, my testimony is that I am not. That is not my legal residence, 441 North 16. That's a my legal, legal argument. That's a legal argument. We'll move on from that. Well, it's a matter of fact in my mind. I understand that. And that's a legal argument that Mr. Gross is going to be making. You can say that you were uh, on probation or parole, that you were uh, required to stay in California, Nevada. You can show proof of that. And that will then go to the argument of whether or not you were able or required to be, have a registered vehicle. All right? Okay, well, these statutes that I copied from the NRS, that would be Exhibit P. Exhibit Q, after we left the uh, court last time in this bifurcated trial, I went to get uh, parole probation to see if they would give me an out-of-state travel permit, which I was granted an out-of-state travel permit. And in the reasons they said uh, it uh, states here, let's see. Uh, to escort a friend, part of religious beliefs. So that would be exhibit Q. That just shows that I have to have written permission in order to, to leave the state. This trip never ended up not happening. She didn't have to go, but she needed an escort. She asked for an escort, and I was going to escort her despite the risk of going out of state. 
uh, I think there was some false testimony or misleading testimony. Uh, objection. I, I, I need to rebut. Objection as to any testimony given. You may testify. I rebut each one. This is I'm not rebutting. time for you to rebut. And to give testimony regarding the issue of driving without a registration or no valid license on uh, September 16, 2022. Okay. Well, Exhibit R is an order to travel out of state, which I did go see my son get his PhD, and this was granted in 2021. So I wasn't here all that time. I did get permission to travel. Uh, <clears throat> Let's see. Exhibit S is the NRS, which I studied on foreign public documents and me being able to authenticate foreign public documents, which my passport there is included, which will be a further exhibit. This is my judgment of conviction, which relates to residency uh, in the uh, trial and puts me on probation. This was the conviction. Is, uh, July 12, 2022, and the judge ordered, you shall not leave the state without first obtaining written permission from the division of parole and probation, which is what that document did. Didn't need to use it. Uh, and uh, so that makes me a prisoner of parole and probation. It was the amended judgment of conviction. Now, this amended judgment conviction came right after the uh, the jailing of me, and so the judge added this provision in there: Do not drive a motor vehicle in the state of Nevada without a valid driver's license issued by the state of Nevada and the Department of Motor Vehicles. I have not violated this order, not even one inch, with that truck. I did not drive, even though. I think she went beyond her scope <clears throat> with that order, but it did not violate it. That's exhibit U. At this point, Your Honor, I'm just going to move to strike all of it. If it's all right. well, I think there's some relevancy regarding his JOCs and not the, the argument that he is making, the legal argument is that he is a prisoner of this and is unable to get registration because of that. So that does become somewhat resident, relevant. Um, and then on the, on the argument part, I, I, no, I had nothing uh, to do with this. <laughs> I, I agree with you. I think I made that argument. Or, or that, <clears throat> that is reserved for, for uh, closing arguments. So I'll sustain that as to any legal arguments. Go ahead. My exhibit, uh, my exhibit B, defense exhibit B, is the passport, Kingdom of Israel passport. The district attorney was kind enough to provide me the means to make a duplicate. Uh, everything on this is true. I'm an ambassador of Christ, Kingdom of Israel, born in 1955, tribe of Judah, Israelite, birthplace, Great Falls, Montana, produced in August of He's at exhibit V. Sex male, brown hair. <laughs> That's gone a little bit. Salt and pepper, hazel eyes. 5'8", when I did it, I shrunk about an inch and a half. 180, I expanded a little bit on that. Then my name, the ambassador, signature of bearer. That's a picture of me back in 1993 uh -huh. with the Star of David with the crucifix on the inside uh -huh. of that. It has the authorization, which is coded to show the address. I mean, that's 31 years ago. You need to renew it. Renew <laughs> your passport every 10 years. Day. <laughs> defiling the temple with vaccinations. Then it has a driver's license. In the French, it's permis conducive. So this is the out-of-state driver's license or out-of-country driver's license, state, country. And so uh, this is has been presented. That exhibit that I had there. Is what exhibit presented. number is that? Huh? What exhibit number is that? Oh, it's uh, exhibit B. B? The B is in Victor. Me, Mr. Mr. Dixon, do you have that copy? I don't have copies of any. Oh. Yeah, he, this was a Jeez. prosecution that he said it as well. Right. A picture of it, in any way. A picture of this. Yeah, and I just want to be clear, Your Honor. I believe the state entered that as an exhibit as well. So this may be duplicative, but one of the prosecution exhibits. 
I'll <laughs> testify out there. Photographs, I think, that were of the John Eagle. All right, go ahead. And oh, the bottom dear. says notice notifying case of emergency in the United States of America. Right. Yes, we can move on. Okay. The documents there. <clears throat> which one are we doing? That's exhibit B. Exhibit W, this is also <laughs> one of the uh, prosecution's uh, with, uh, exhibits, was the certified dismissal in Boulder City. And the, 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 the city attorney at that time was Gary Booker. I think the judge has been around, Michael Dickerson, know that he's a former district attorney uh, for uh, this county. But he was a city attorney then. He said, Mr. Blandino, you know, I'll dismiss these charges. Uh, except for the traffic uh, license just fax me a copy of your driver's license and it shows in the prosecution exhibit as well as this that that's a fact a fax page of exhibit B <laughs> that's a fact. that shows the driver's license my picture and that's what i faxed him and he did in fact dismiss those charges and they certified i got a certified copy of that because god told me that you're going to probably oh my goodness say, right. what exhibit are we on w w huh? oh my goodness i bet he's got a lot of office depot reward uh, points so in the united know. states this is a letter that i just got care of 441 north 16. that's how they address me here because i can't leave the state without permission and so that's exhibit no nah, he's been doing the religious thing all along so on the night I was stopped, the test, I, I, there was a lady with her light blown out on the passenger side. So an hour and a half. I, I tried catching up to her and everything. So at the stoplight, it was red. I got out of my truck. This is all on the body cam footage. I got out of my truck. I wanted to warn her because I didn't warn her. And she got an action, killed somebody. God would call me to account. If she got an accident, I didn't do my best to try and stop it. It was on the way home. It was the third light out on a vehicle that I saw, and I was able to warn one of the prior two vehicles that they had a light out. So when they, they saw me, they made me turn off uh, there. Martinez and Neeson were not even going to give me uh, a ticket. They were going to give me a warning. Then they said, well, get a ticket. Then Officer Meade was, was they had put a tickler on the computer, and he was to show up. He testified at my prior trial. This guy. In yeah, me is no joke. Uh, objection, Your Honor. Well, well if we're getting into the, the, the opinion, uh, uh, sustain the objection is the opinion of the testifier. Did he tell him that he's on a mission from God? Giving opinion is why the officer is there. I think okay. that's the Blues Brothers. He, they were going to uh, uh, let me go on this issue of citation. He got there and he ordered these people around and ordered to arrest them. The, the the passport driver's license had already been put away. He said, wait a minute, what did he present? <laughs> oh, I, I want this guy arrested. I want his, this is what he said directly to me. I want him arrested. I want his probation, uh, a hold put on him by probation because of this felony. And uh, uh, these two young officers, Martinez and Newsom, they complied with that in just about every respect. Uh, he was, uh, his demeanor was very uh, vicious and uh, hateful. It was obvious that he wanted to hurt me. And so he thought that, uh, well, I'm going to his thinking. But anyway, uh, he ordered them to do so when they weren't going to do that. And so the truck was towed. He ordered those, he pulled the plates off right there and then confiscate them. I said, what are you going to do with those plates? He says, I don't know. I'm going to turn them in. They, they never got into evidence as far as I know. And uh, I tried, I took a full day to try and track down where those plates were, but it was to no avail. Uh, there, there was no way to recover. So I had to get plates for that truck after I got out of the tow yard, put it into the driveway, didn't drive it again since or travel in it or anything. So um my legal residence is the kingdom of israel i haven't been there yet i traveled a great deal montana arizona i did and so i was well aware of the law i looked at the law on seasonal residency and so on and so forth 
And I determined that without violating the law, as long as I leave the state even once per year, that I could maintain a legal residence somewhere else and uh, and I could maintain even other residences like uh, in Arizona and then Montana, which I've been back to Montana and Arizona since 1993. And I've traveled in that vehicle in the kingdom of Israel and licensed to drive conventional motor vehicles, bicycles, horse and carriage. In this state, I've driven um, and, roads and construction equipment on the road that don't go to 35 miles an hour with the orange triangle for which a driver's license is not required at all with an orange slow moving vehicle uh <laughs> triangle in the back of the back of the there we go that's him highways, rolling down the street highway in an excavator being on a back off <laughs> so I used that to have a, it just sucks lessons. to park that to thing, though. I gotta tell you. <laughs> so, finding parking I for my want, excavator. What my king wants, he wants the maximum <laughs> amount of freedom. So long as we love our neighbor as ourselves and love God with all our might and do no harm, there is no harm that is done. I have people that will uh, monitor whether, you know, once you get to a certain age, whether you're capable. Of driving, you know, my mom gave up her capability of driving because she was not able All to right, do it. We anymore. can move on from there. All right. So anyway, my understanding of all of this stuff is that this is a valid license. I believe that I've had it ratified by the Boulder City Court, by the Municipal Court. I've been stopped by other officers. They look at it and they say, "Ah, oh, that doesn't mean anything." Sometimes they have written me a ticket. Sometimes they have. But the validity of this. I believe, even if there's any kind of dispute, it's arguable that this is a permissible thing under the statute. There was no evil design. Uh, if there has been a mistake of fact in that, whether this is uh, this is a valid driver's license or not, it is not geared toward any kind of uh, thing to harm anybody. I know I'm capable of traveling in a car, driving in a car, a horse drawn carriage, whatever. I have the capability to do that. And the statute, as I read it, says a valid driver's license. And to me, there is no reason under my religious beliefs and practices that this shouldn't be held up as valid. It has, as far as Judge Roger was concerned, the Boulder City Court was concerned, other police officers are concerned. Concern, uh, concern. I think it was just my misfortune that Detective Me had an axe to grind with me. And so that's why, you know, he charged initially because I had this and a duplicate. There's a two of these. Uh, I had a duplicate just in case one was lost. I was initially charged with two counts for having the same document, which to me was just incredibly bizarre. So uh, again, just to wrap up, my legal residence is not there. I would be able to travel if not, you know, I, I would love to go to Israel, especially now that things, World War III has just begun. And, uh, you know, to maybe help out. <laughs> say World War III has just begun. You know, state of Israel is held under stewardship <laughs> until Jesus comes back and travel to Montana and then to Arizona and all. but. It would have been foolish for me. I, those permanent plates on that truck were something so you don't have to mess with it ever again. But if a vehicle in Montana is 11 years or older, you're allowed to get permanent plates. You pay somewhere around, uh, or you remit somewhere around uh, three years worth of normal registrations, and then it's permanent for as long as you own that truck. As far as they're concerned, until the year 9999. Those plates are good. And so if you can keep a truck alive that long, well, God bless you. So uh, as I look at the law, the law I've heard over and over again throughout my whole life that the law is meant to be used as a shield, not a sword. So I constructed my affairs in such a way that I could have a maximum amount of freedom without 
harming anybody in any way. No, if the expression's thrown up, you have the right to extend your arm, but it ends at somebody else's chin. And so this is the creed, and this is what my king teaches. Love God with all your might, and then love your neighbor as yourself. And that's what I've done in trying to stop that lady from driving with a blown out uh, light. It could have stayed in my truck, but God would have held me to account if she got in an accident. And I, was, I had a chance to prevent that by letting her know, hey, pull off the side of the road, you've got a bad headlight. Almost got hit by a car one time myself because I thought it was a motorcycle going down the road at night, and it turns out it was just a, a car with a burnout headlight almost walked right in front of it, right into that car, and into a crosswalk. So I live by the scriptures, the Ten Commandments, the New Testament, and uh, my you just there's just no reason that this can't be deemed acceptable what I'm doing here. I I would love to have been a, maintain my citizenship of the United States if possible, but God called me to do this. And so all right, thank you very much, Mr. Blandino. Uh I need to get some water. I'm getting caught in that mm -hmm. more. Mr. Uh, Dickerson, then cross examination, and I'll allow you. I am not oh, licensed in the kingdom of Israel. Yeah, you want to grab the exhibits while he drinks? Some he water? said he could travel to Israel. I would like to see Israeli uh, customs <laughs> greet him with his <laughs> made up 1993 passport. Oh, Dickerson's going to cross him now. This is going to be ugly. Ugly. <laughs> Dickerson's had enough of this dude. I'm surprised he let him speak. Like this is no. I don't get why he's testifying first. I don't see the state put on a case. Why is he testifying first? Oh, the state rested weeks ago. This has been going on forever. So you are ah. a felon. Which one? What are you referring to? Tell me. I'm sorry. I thought you were asking right. questions. Question is: Are you a convicted felon? One's convicted. All right. And when was that? Uh, 1994-5. Okay, so you're convicted of a felony in 1994-5. Yeah. You were also convicted of a felony in 2022. That conviction is not final though yet. It is uh, final conviction because it's subject to a judgment of conviction, which you actually have included here, right? No, a conviction is not final until the appeal is decided, and the appeal is still pending. Strike is not responsive and is improperly ineffective as a counsel on this appeal. I, I put that in as exhibit if you want. It's the yeah, DLC on the yeah. exhibit. <laughs> he moved it in. Well, yeah. The court He's tried. All right. Am I missing a judge? No, 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 not right now. You're being crossed again. Okay. So, why he's uh, looking for that? Do you know no. what number that no. is? Oh, goodness. The uh, exhibit T is the judgment, and exhibit U is the amended. For speed's sake, I help you this way. This is going to take a minute. I could use the back. No, you cannot. You have to sit right there. If I get the Mr. Dickerson, hold on. If you use the bathroom break, right, we'll come back. Give a, some questions you wish to ask, and maybe you can send one. I do have plenty of questions. I just, uh, we're sorting through his exhibit here, Your Honor. So, Your Honor, yeah. Your Honor, when Mr. Blandinger brought out his exhibits, it was, I think, decided that and Mr. Dickerson said, I want some time between this time. So take a bathroom break right now. I, I'm good. Well, you know, he, he needs a bathroom break. I'll give him a bathroom break before we discover the open. Glad you know you're still under oath. You're going to be able to uh, take a bathroom break in five minutes on this bathroom. You got here, right? I'll, I'll be less than that, but thank you, Judge. Sorry about that. Mr. Dickerson snuck in. I didn't see him come in. He's a sneak. 
right. All right. Matter, which is uh, Kim Dennis Blandino, 22CR04103. Mr. Blandino did take a break through the restroom, but so you understand you're still under oath and under perjury. Right. All right, Mr. Dickerson. So, defendant proposed U and T. These. We would have. I want to get the exhibits that you had that had been admitted already previously. Yeah, I want. I, if I could get them all mine, that'd be awesome. I uh, I have no objection to you and T being admitted. The remaining will come in as court exhibits. Judge, what does that mean as court exhibits? Is it what is it? You know, you're trying to answer questions, not right. ask questions. So, can I proceed, Your Honor? You may. So, Mr. Blake, you know, when was it that you came to Clark County, Nevada? The first time. The first time? Yeah. I'm trying to think. I knew it was 1963. How old were you then? Uh, either seven or eight. I don't know what month it was. That's what I'm trying to gauge. Okay. And and how long did you say that? Well, how long I was did you seven say? or eight years old. As long as my parents did. And how long was that? I don't recall. Did you ever leave? Yes, all the time. Okay. I traveled. I told you I traveled. And so when did uh, you you actually come to stay here for a significant amount of time? What, what, what defined here? What's here? Clark County, Nevada. Is Clark County, Nevada include uh, Gene Prison, uh, Indian Springs Prison? Yeah. It does? Okay. Yeah, it does. Does it include Lovelock, Nevada? No. It doesn't include Lovelock, Nevada? Okay. Well, that's more complicated. It was, was when I was in prison from the 90s, I was moved around a lot. And were you residing in Clark County when you were in prison? No, not according to my understanding of the law. When that case occurred, that was in the 90s, right? Yes. You had two children here in Clark County, Nevada. Uh, you, are you asking if they were born here or they were they were here at the time? Yeah, yeah, they're right. Yes. Okay. And so at that point in time, you had children here in Clark County, Nevada. Ultimately, you took them out of the state of Nevada, right? Uh, ultimately, what, what, you know, with, without getting into too much of what occurred there, right? You're ultimately convicted of taking them out of the state of Nevada, but you took them from here, from Clark County, right? Yeah, we went to Montana and then later to Arizona, and then I was picked up by the FBI in Arizona for clarification. Okay, you come back to Nevada, you're ultimately convicted out in here. Oregon, don't forget you Oregon. In Nevada. Not my legal residence, no. Okay, how long were you in Nevada? From that point, from the time of your conviction and being sent to prison in the 90s. Are you talking about the time I was brought back? To talking the about it all the time. Well, that's not all the time. I, I can't understand a question like that. So if I can clarify, I'll flesh this out for you. When I was brought back by the FBI here, I was put into, I was put into the Clark County Detention Center. Mm -hmm. Okay, for 28 days. So my understanding of the statute was it didn't change residency. So I'm not a resident when I'm in jail. I'm asking you how long were you in Nevada? Oh. What were the years that you were incarcerated? Do you remember the month and years? Uh, let's see, in 1993. 1993, you were incarcerated? For 28 days. 28 days. And I was let out on on uh all right so on 90, bond, so I was still a prisoner. So in 94 were you residing were you in Nevada? Physically in Nevada? Yeah, I was a prisoner in 95, Nevada. 95 were you physically in Nevada? Yeah, I was a prisoner. 96 were you physically in Nevada? I was a prisoner in the department of prisons. 97 you were in Nevada? 
Physically in Nevada? Yeah, in the prison. 98, were you physically in Nevada? Part of it. I got released on when May. When did you get released? May? 27 of 1998, I believe it was. All right. In 1990, uh, May or June of 1998, were you physically in Nevada? Not the whole time I traveled. Where did you maintain your residence? I maintained a residence in in uh, Arizona, and I maintained the residence that I went when they took the kids. Sorry, Mr. Dixie. And, and, and in my town, I maintained those those residences, but neither one of those residences was my legal residence. Right. My legal residence was right. in the Kingdom of Israel. Okay, right. Mr. Dixie. Okay, sorry, man. Thank you, Your Honor. And so, um, one of the places that that you were residing was in Nevada. But not my legal residence, right? Okay. So you're residing in Nevada, 1998, you said, right? Yeah. Uh, 1999, you're also residing in Nevada. Traveling, all the one time traveling. You were also residing in Nevada during that time? Maintained a residence in, maintained a residence in Montana that I testified to and gave exhibits on, and in Arizona, and then I traveled extensively. Okay. So, Extensive. Pretty good. Before your most recent conviction, you weren't on parole, right? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm not understanding that. So before you, we talked about your recent conviction, we moved the judgments of conviction in, right? I have no objection right. to those, right? Um, everything with that case starts uh, happening, but when before you're arrested on that case, you weren't on parole from your prior conviction, right? What, what time are we talking? I'm, I'm, I'm confused. Let's say early 2019. Okay, so early to 2019. Yeah. Okay, traveling. <laughs> okay, travel. Yeah. Uh, but you had been uh, staying for some time uh, with a woman named Evie Pendergrass? Yes, right. Eve Evelyn's her full name, we just shorten it. And but I was, I was. How long did you reside with her? Well, traveling, but uh, I checked in on her as much as I could. She was uh, had some health problems I had to take care of. In fact, I mean, over and over in your court case, you'd indicated to the court, including Judge Levin, multiple times that, that you had to be out here in Clark County, Nevada at 44116 North 16th Street, right? To take care of Evelyn Pendergrass, right? She did not require 24 hour care. Okay. Yes. Uh, so I could still travel. Okay. How much care did she require? Well, it depends. I mean, it progressed to where she required more care near the end. How much care did she require? How often did she have to care for her? Well, as you know, from September to October, oh, I couldn't get any care because I was in Carson. What year? Huh? What year? Thank you. Oh, September of uh, 20, what was that, 2022? What, what was I arrested? September 2022, the year is blended. Yeah, 2022 to October 31, I was in the Clark County Detention Center. So before May of 2019, how long had you been staying with Miss Evelyn Pendergrass? Traveled and then would always... Uh, how long had you been staying with her? I don't understand the question as phrased. What do you understand about it? It's a very simple question. How long had you been staying with Evelyn Pendergrass? What, what do you mean by staying? Staying at her residence. At 441 North 16th Street. Off and on, I traveled. I told you that. You would agree that 441 North 16th Street here in Las Vegas, Clark County, Nevada, was originally Evelyn Pendergrass's residence, right? Exactly. That's true. Uh, you would agree that at some point in time, um, you took control of that residence, right? No. Oh, so you would be your testimony that you, in fact. Wait a minute. What's some point in time? Are you saying prior to death? Prior to death. Okay. Prior to death. What do you mean by take control? Originally, that, that property was her property, right? I, I'm asking you. I don't understand take control. What does that mean? Yeah. <laughs> Originally, that property was her property, correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, and then at some point in time, you took part in a transaction to sell that property to a foreign party and then lease it back from them. Is that right? What do you mean take part in? I don't understand that. You took part in that transaction, right? What do you mean take part in? I don't understand. You actually helped execute paperwork. I helped Evie with the paperwork, yes. Okay. If you want to say it that way, I helped Evie that's with the paperwork that's what he meant to sell by her house to another. That's taking part. Yeah. You were still living in the house, right? 
even after the sale. And traveling. And Evelyn and her dress was still living in the house. Right. And about what year was that sale? I'm sorry? About what year was that sale? I don't recall precisely. Okay. Before 2019, right? Yes, it was definitely before. Okay. So you helped sell Evelyn's house out from under her and help lease it back. Oh, no, no. I'm sorry. Well, I'm going to object. I, I don't know if I can, Your Honor, but the, the, the characterization of you selling it out from under her, like, that's, that's a flame authority. Oh, it's just being Okay, so you Please don't do that again. You, you just, Put Please, your finger down. Just, all right, I'm just not. Put your I'm not. Down. All right, this is enough. He's trying to antagonize Mr. Ladino. Just answer the question. But he said he's trying to. He's trying to antagonize me. He's trying to push Mr. Ladino. What do you mean by answer the question? All right, move on. Move on. Sell it out from under her. All right, ask the question, Mr. Mr. Ladino. If you have one more outburst, you're going to be removed from the stand. I'm sorry, Judge. I apologize. All right, let's go. Go ahead and ask the questions. The residence was hers before that. What I'm saying. Before what? Before you helped her sell it to a foreign investor and then rent it back with them, right? Yes, it was hers. Okay. And she was an elderly lady at the time, right? The fine elderly? How old was she? I, since I don't know the exact year, she was in her 90s. Okay. I was That'll do it. Make it go okay. That qualifies elderly. And you were living with her helping her. And traveling. And that's in two, before 2019. Right. Okay. And then come uh, 2019, May, in fact, 2019, uh, you were not on parole for your prior conviction, right? Oh, oh, I'm the one from the 90s. Yeah. No, I was not on parole. Okay. You're not on probation. Right. Okay. And uh, you're maintaining a residence over at 441 North 16th Street here in Los Angeles. As well as the one I'm maintaining in Montana and the one I'm maintaining in Arizona. Or my due to my traveling. Leave that's a the yes. address. Right? You can send them a postcard. Yes, now. with an explanation. Okay. So, yes, you're that's maintaining a residence there at 441. Well, actually, and technically, Evie's maintaining. Okay. Well, you, you had a room there, right? She made a room available to me. You would sleep there, right? Not always. But you would sleep From time there. to time, yes. Okay. You had an <laughs> office there. Well, it was, a, it was a bedroom office. You've seen it in the pictures. Yeah. You had lots of documents that you're working on there, right? right? And that's where you maintain your documents, right? <laughs> Not all of them. I think I know what you're talking uh, about. Okay. Where were the other ones? Storage. But no. Where was that storage? Don't recall. Okay. You know I had that? I know I had some things stored, but my son's uh, my son's place where he's staying with his grandfather. Okay. And um, in fact, you had been staying over at that residence for years before May of two thousand. And traveling. Okay. And oh then ultimately, goodness. in uh, May of two thousand nineteen, you're ultimately arrested, right? Yeah. Prisoner from that point on. Okay. And uh, till today, actually. And till today, you're still staying at 441 North 16th Street, right? And traveling. Now, since this point, uh, Evelyn Pendergrass is dying, right? Well, she died March 23 of 1920. Wait a minute. It's been one year. March 28th of 2023. Okay. So, March of 2023. Evelyn Pendergrass dies, and you're still living in the residence from that time forward. Well, I, I need second of her state. I still have things I have to do for her. She's got tons of stuff in that house that I have to maintain and take care of as the executor. All right. So and and in addition to his travel, you had discussed <laughs> uh, uh, the court or your counsel had the dent card is this small. document from the Nevada DMV notice of denial or disqualification. Right? True. You would agree that this document indicates that uh, to inform you that you do not qualify to receive driving privileges from the Department of Motor Vehicles for the following reason. Unsatisfactory documentation to receive drivers, right? 
That's what they put down. Okay. And then no, we need, we need Ricky Nelson to the ghost to come in and start singing Travel Can I take a look at that again? On my memory of what they wrote is not 100%. Yeah, bro, John. Give me a second to look at this, okay? Okay. You want me to repeat? No, 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 I'm just asking a question. Okay. Stay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, good. Looks good. That refreshes your That doesn't mind. mean I can't forget it by the time you get over there. The memory's not what it used to be. Well, we can keep doing this. It's okay. All right. So that would include no birth certificate, right? Or all Did the they put that on there? Yep. Yeah. Oh, okay. No passport. I don't think it says no passport. So okay. Jason, you want to stand up there and read it to him? Yeah. Yeah, because, if you yeah, because uh, yeah, I think he's just he hold on. Hold tricks. on, Mr. Blandino. He'll read it to you. It's an exhibit. Are we moving this into evidence at this point? Sure, we can move this. In. This does not say what no passport. On it. What, what, what exhibit is this? <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry. It does say no. I'm sorry. I apologize. Not. It does what say no birth certificate. Just okay. exhibit. What's the exhibit number? Or, or if you could just make this next in line. Six. Yeah. Well, I, I had uh, put an exhibit letter. Oh, then, then where exhibit that? Exhibit. What exhibit is it? Defense exhibit what? You've got the list there. Are you asking me, Judge? Uh, let's see. Could be exhibit G or exhibit G. 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 Exhibit G. 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 Yeah. Stipulate to admit it at time of preliminary hearing, right? right? Yes, Your Honor. Oh, I'm sorry. Trial. <laughs> Back me up. Oh boy. Wait, is that it? What just happened? Well, let me see here. Just wait a second. All right. Does that bring back fun memories for you? It's not it. There's a second part that he was he was uploading. I'm gonna have to go find oh, it now. Part and it's two. and it's as long as the anger. first part. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna power Love through. It. It'll be me and two people by the end of this. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this is where you know living in the Pacific time zone you, has its advantages. You have to admit oh it's, it's a lot more fun to, to to watch this on YouTube than to experience it live in in the well. Oh, absolutely, no <laughs> doubt about it. There is no doubt about it. <laughs> watch poor is it Gersten just go down in flames? Yes. Oh Every my other gosh. thing out of his mouth. My client wants me to say yes, <laughs> which which we all know. Which is, we all know God, is, yes. is us saying, I know what's bullshit, Seriously. but I have to. <laughs> Don't blame me. <laughs> Just work here. Yeah. Uh, let me, I, I got to try to find this thing now here. Let me see. Hang out as long as you want or go or whatever. That, that, that's fine, button. But I, everyone was happy to see you, especially since we, oh, in the, were, did you see in the beginning, the pre stuff? Because I had the trial. Uh, so with you were doing some, yeah, some flashback or something. What's, oh. Yeah, what was that? Good times, good times. All right, let me see here. Let's let's see if he's got the let's see if he's got the other thing up yet. I'm not sure if this is gonna work. No. Part two. Come on. This is the one we just watched. One twenty four. Okay. All right, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna put let me see if I can get Oh, yeah, it's midnight huh, on the East Coast. I, I'm, I'm <laughs> nothing like live streaming me texting Alex. <laughs> oh, yeah, you want to go back? I can look up stuff on the internet like we did the other time a couple <laughs> weeks ago. That was riveting, too. People were fascinated with it. I got to hang out now. We got to see the gripping conclusion. I know what oh, happens. Yeah. Don't say it. I know what happens. You know what I, I do, I, too, but still, you told I mean. Me the Titanic made a billion dollars and everyone knew the boat was going to sink. I mean, people watch. <laughs> we, we can, we, yeah. 
doesn't matter. You know how it ends. It we still watch. <laughs> Wait a second. Let's let's do this though. We we we, we missed the gripping finale of this. Oh, While we're Lord. waiting for him to do that, I'm going to. Well, I think you I'm should sing, give us your point. rendition of Traveling Man by Ricky Nelson. Or Rambling Man. We'll take you You aren't doing it. If you aren't having fun, you aren't doing what it is right. It? Was this the trial? This is back to the trial, but we we get, we, we had know. to click over right right before the best part, which is here. Doing it because he's having fun. And then... Oh, dear. It goes further. In that April 25th, 2019 letter... It wasn't just about. This I'm like, sorry. I'm gonna stop. No, stop. stop. It's not no. supposed to be like this. No, 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 no. Me. Stop. It's right there. Stop. Stop. No, no, no. Can you mind, Mr. Yeah, okay, yell at him. Mr. Davis is not supposed to say, well, I'm sorry. Last part. Okay. If he can, A, say. He's trying to talk to me. Stop talking. Purposely. He knows he's trying to talk to me. Stop. This is going to be right in the middle of the way. I'm making a bar complaint against you, Mr. Dickerson. I will get these jets and I will make a bar complaint against you. Mr. Grandino, stop. Hey. If I would have done this, you would have told me not to do that. Watching you, watching me, watching me. It's inappropriate for him to come here multiple times. And you know that, Judge. Wow. Wow. He is permitted to walk around the You would not let me do that if I were representing myself. If I were going over to the prosecution. I had an appearance in front of Judge uh, Levitt today. Listen to news or media accounts or commentary about the things doing research, such as consulting dictionaries using the internet. All right. I won't I, I won't make you relive all of that. I won't make you relive uh, all of that. Dear. Good times, good times. <laughs> and and I've got uh, and we're we're, we're going to be closing this one down here because th- th- that was that was absolutely wild. But I'm I'm talking to Alex. He's a couple hours out from having that thing done. Oh really? I'll just do all part right. two in the morning. All right. Well, send me a link, man. I mean, that, yeah, that's we got to watch the it's eleven o'clock here. And then oh, right before oh, the man. stream. Yesenia texts me and says, oh, you actually do have to go to court tomorrow. What, what, I won't get into the intricacies of it, but like, I couldn't even cocktail through this. Bummer. But the, the one interesting thing is he keeps doing the traveling thing, which is which is interesting in the context because the sovereign citizens always claim they're traveling as opposed to driving. Right. That's not what he's doing. There, He <laughs> keeps saying he's traveling because he's trying to beat up the – he's trying to say the state hasn't proved residency – Therefore, right. he's he's not always in the state. He's in the state of Nevada all the time. He's not in any of these other places. He's not in Arizona, I mean, but a couple of days a year. And he's not in Montana. And he's not in the kingdom of God, as far as I know, except in some celestial sense that I don't understand. Well, that's I was like, where, where are you going? You're not going, you're not going anywhere. Come on. Even if he wasn't on probation, he's not going anywhere. Like, <laughs> Yeah. And then, but you know, I, like, his one clever argument doesn't matter. It doesn't win the day for him. But his one clever argument is, oh, no, no, I, I wasn't a resident. But the, the entire, he knows he's screwed but with the imprisonment. And he looked that up. They said, well, you can't change residency or whatever as a result of being a prisoner there. Right. It's dopey, but it's an argument. I'm like, yeah, that's great. But you don't need to change because you always were a Nevada resident. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> Oh, someone asked. Me, I did see the passport. Yes, I have seen it. I have held it. I have looked at it. And I oh, seen it. that is but, that, and, and and he it is. He it, went through. He must spend a lot of money though. He he reproduced that. He made a duplicate of that passport. That wouldn't be cheap. Yeah, well, I mean, it's not it's expensive, not, but it's a pain in the ass. Like you have to assemble materials and stuff to make a duplicate passport. Yeah, but it's not exactly like the uh, quality passport of like your real, you know, United States of America passport. It's not like, it's not like one of these oh. these bad boys. Well, you just keep it. Man. Oh, I got I got my passport in a, in a holster. Yeah, I got mine right. 
when, when, I just wanted to read whenever, I wanted to read. You never know when one needs to leave the country, Ben. Well, yeah. No, I know. <laughs> you, well, I know you got to like, yes. You got your, uh, what is it, your bug out bag and your passport right there. I, I absolutely. Get absolutely. Yeah. Anytime you, you, you've got to be prepared. Yes. No, I understand why. Yes. There's information as to why, <laughs> yes, you would need to be able to leave at any moment. They could be charged, but they're small fish and people, we, we have better things to do. Yes, theoretically, all these people could be charged. Yeah. I don't know why to this day, because they were kicking around a charge for, for him producing false documents. He's now... And originally, he was, the and they ended up dropping that. They ended up dropping that charge, because originally, he, I, he was charged with that. I know. The possession but, but like, of a document to establish a false identity or whatever, blah, 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 the, exactly how the statute's worded, but yeah. I, I, that charge got dropped. But th this is a common question, and it's a good question for, for sort of like lay people out there. Ben and I know it, because we do this, but like... Prosecutors don't prosecute every potential possible violation of the law, or, or we, we'd never stop. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's got to be like clear, obvious, provable stuff. Right, and then, right. like, a lot so, of things get looked, a lot of things get looked, you know, they look the other way because, uh, yeah, yes, he, he made a face false passport. Yes, he, he produced false documents to, to the police. <laughs> I, if, yeah. If some drug king pinned it, they'd, they'd probably tack the charge on to make it stick because it matters. But he that's that's the truth. The reality is he's kind of a harmless goof, so no one wants to pursue it. Right. That, that It's more of a practicality answer than a law answer. Yes, well, yes, one could make that case. Absolutely. No toys about it. Yes. It's just but, uh, ain't nobody got time for that. And it's so not going to happen. Yeah. All uh, yes, yeah. half these people could be prosecuted for for um, unauthorized practice of law. They don't have any money to pay a fine. They aren't doing anything. You, you know, it's not worth the resources to hunt them down. Honestly, yeah, that's, that's just the way it is. All right, buddy. Well, thanks for coming out. I, I, I'll I'll do this other one in the morning. Yeah, yeah. Well, 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 I've got court in the morning too. Maybe, maybe I'll do it like early, early in the morning. If I can get right, my, let me know. I do that early morning. It doesn't really matter. We'll watch the rest of the trial. All right. At some yeah, point. So send me, yeah. Send me an invite, man. I gotta oh, see this. No, that was it was fun. It was fun to watch you scroll through through a video of of the, <laughs> I don't um, have video. I don't have video I of I don't want to watch myself. I don't like the crappiest moments from my trials. Like you were doing fine, but it's just it's just a nightmare. <laughs> uh, that's what I forgot when I yelled at Kim. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, good time. Sorry. All right. Wait, wait, wait. I've got a little more video of you striking out, hitting on a chick here, Ben. You, you, let's let's have you watch that too. Oh dear. Okay. <laughs> I'm I'm kidding. Ben's like he might he might actually have that. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. If you said you know, actually connecting, then yeah, actually you know, you're accepting like yeah, that's plausible. Like, well, yeah, like you know. <laughs> That wouldn't be. There's no video of that. But, yeah. All right. Although, Thank you all for coming there out. Were some, there, were, there were some people visiting, I will say, and I did offer to introduce them to Kim Blandino, and they declined. <laughs> they turned down the Kim Blandino tour? I can't believe it. Yeah. I, I was like, hey, I, he would, yes. Yeah. He would love it. He would love to meet the people. That, uh, yeah. <laughs> he would love Sing to meet y'all, I'm sure. And I'd love to meet you. He would, yes, he would have loved it. But oh, and he'd be fun. He'd just sit there and talk your ear off about stuff like that. That's what he would do. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway. All right. Thank you, my man. Thanks everybody for coming out. I will. Yes, I will do the second part when I get it. All right. Good night.